All right, so I'm in Aguanga, California. Hope I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, I just finished uh, shooting this post office right here, and I noticed the general store, and I definitely want to take a shot at that. But the only reason why I'm, why I'm not doing it right now is because it is uh, it's 1 15 in the afternoon and I got super harsh uh, sun right now. So uh, it's not going to work for that uh, general store. But um, I'm going to go ahead and scout it out and see what I need to uh, know and then come back. Um, hopefully I get an overcast day. So uh, let's go do that. Okay, so it doesn't look too hard. I do see a couple of um, problems. Wow, oh, there's some loud traffic going by here. What? Oh, I'm just doing a video for YouTube. No problem. Have a nice day. Um, okay, so um, I do see a couple of issues. Um, in order to get a clean shot of the building, I'm gonna need no cars here, so I'm not sure how that's gonna happen. Hopefully, uh, maybe just serendipity will help me. Um, the other issue is I got speeding traffic and I'm gonna have to stand a few feet from speeding traffic. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's the problem. Hopefully my mic is working from here. I'm gonna have to stand about... Um, I, I, I left my wallet at home. I'm gonna have to stand probably about right here. And I got speeding traffic right here. Um, so I'm about to put my large format tripod, or tripod I should say, and all my stuff. So this is gonna be a bit hairy. Okay, so that about wraps up this uh, scouting trip. And I did learn a few things in order to make this uh, shot successful that I need to do. Number one, this video camera is going to need to be probably just a wide shot uh, way off to the side over here because there's a bunch of cars that are coming in and out and I can't just have a tripod out in the middle of nowhere. It'll get immediately, it'll get immediately run over. So um, that's a thing. And then the other thing is I'm going to be shooting literally five feet from speeding cars. So I'm going to have to probably assemble my 4x5 kit right here. Camera on the tripod, film holder ready to go, um, any gear I need. Uh, wrapped up in a case so that I can carry it in case I have to move real quickly. So um, I think that's about it other than I'll need to wait for an overcast day. I think uh, that's about all the uh, info I need. So overcast day, 4x5 kit assembled ahead of time, video camera off to the side and I'll just have to do uh, a voiceover. All right, so that takes care of that scouting. Hopefully the next time I see you, I'm shooting this building. So I parked my car in the upper parking lot just to avoid my own vehicle being in any of the photos. And then I assembled my camera and lens uh, ahead of time so that I didn't have to do it because I'm going to have to stand near that traffic and I don't want to fiddle with all that and then worry about the traffic at the same time. So I'm just staging my tripod right in front of the store right before I set up a composition with my viewfinder app. All right, so let's talk about the equipment that I'm using. On the front of the camera, I went with a Schneider 120 millimeter lens, and that's attached to a Toyo Copal Zero lens board. Now that's attached to my Toyo Field 45A 4x5 large format camera, and I'm using Fidelity Elite film holder with a Stone Photo Gear custom made film holder holder. And then I use my E-Tone um, loop, that's from etonephoto.com. Love that loop. It's got an adjustable diopter. Very nice loop. Then I got my Seconic meter. Gotta love that meter. And then I got my Manfrotto 3021N tripod. And on top I got a 3029 head. These are both old models but they work great. I love this particular tripod because it has discrete left to right and front to back controls. And then I've got these little levels that I throw in my pocket because I'm going to need to level the camera. I just use one. I just have two in the photo. Not sure why I took a photo of two, but I have a couple just sitting in the bag. All right, so set the tripod closer to the camera bag so I can keep an eye on it. And then I go out to the parking lot and launch my viewfinder app that I've talked about a few times on previous videos. And then turn around and try to figure out how I'm going to frame this store. All right, so I launched the app and this is what it looks like. I got a 90 millimeter lens. 
showing this is just a little too wide so let me step back just a little bit try it again so with 120 millimeter and that uh, that looks a lot better so the center is really all I need that puts it right next to the left side of the front door taking a couple snaps here just to record it so it puts the center right between the open sign and the left top corner of the front door and that's the only information I need to frame my composition. All right, so center up a little bit. Let's try that again, just to verify. Yep, the center is definitely between the door and the window, in the upper left corner of the front door. All right, so that's all I need. All right, so the, there's a ton of cars flying by, and they look like they're going a lot faster than they really are, but there's a stop sign just about 100 yards from the store, so it's not that big of a deal, but it did make me a little nervous. All right, and then the owner of the store comes out. Very nice guy. He said his name was Singh. He's just warning me about the traffic going, uh, flying by really fast, and I thanked him, and said that, well, today's my day to go, then I'm okay, I just want to get this picture. And then he asked about my camera. I explained it was a film camera, and I am just here taking a picture of his store. Very nice guy. Said, no problem, take all the pictures that you want. Just be careful of all these cars going by. And uh, I said, no problem, thank you so much. All right, then I leveled the camera left to right and front to back. So the film plane is completely parallel to the front of the store. A ton of vehicles going by. I just keep thinking, man, am I going to get this shot? So then I get my viewfinder app out again and take a quick, quick uh, snap just to verify I'm good. And yep, I'm good. I'm going to have to ask those guys to move. Hopefully that won't be a problem. This guy's looking at me like, uh, what's that guy doing? Large format cameras definitely have people ask a lot of questions. He didn't come up and ask me anything, and that happens all the time. Sort of okay and sort of annoying at the same time. Those of you that shoot large format understand uh, where I'm coming from. Not a big deal, but I deal with it all the time. That's why I had no problem when the owner walked out, and I was kind of glad he did. So he gave me permission to shoot, which I really don't need, but it's always nice just to have their blessing. And then check the uh, front of the lens and make sure the lens is closed. And then uh, get out my meter. Now, what I did meter was um, the upper right section of the front of the store. And I uh, set that at plus one half. And the, meter, uh, that I came, the metering that I came up with was a 60th of a second at f16 and a half at ISO 100 because I'm shooting nectar. And then I asked those guys to move if they could please move just to the left of the store, and they said no problem. So that was nice of them to move. Took the first shot, and then go ahead and uh, put the dark slide back in, and then pull the holder and flip it around. So I'm going to take two frames here just in case one isn't enough. You never know. It could be scratches, could be something. Don't want to have to do this again. I'm standing literally 10 feet from speeding cars. Go ahead and reset the lens. Pull the dark slide and take the shot. Put the dark slide back in. Hopefully we're good to go. There were no cars in the frame, thank goodness. They all pulled either to the left or to the right. Sort of amazing when that happens. The owner was pretty nice, by the way. I did go back in and thank him again and bought a drink. He shook his hand and explained a little bit more about the camera. Super nice guy. All right, and that's it. Go home, pull the film out of the holders, and then uh, ship the film off to the lab. So this is how I ship my film. This is all done in a dark bag, by the way. Put the film between the two little cardboard pieces that come with the box. Put a rubber band around that just so that it doesn't bounce around a whole bunch. And it keeps the film in between those two holders, which probably doesn't make a whole lot of difference. The, these boxes are light tight anyway. And then I put the box back together with notes on the front. Please return all parts of the box. And then put two rubber bands just so the box doesn't come apart in transit. 
I've done this a whole bunch of times and never had any problem. Put it inside of a bubble envelope, push it in there, send it off to the lab. All right, so a few days later, I did get the negatives back. Happy to see that they came out. It's half the fun of shooting film, never know what you're gonna get. All right, so here's my Epson scan. I put both pieces of film on the glass. Yeah, I know that's not the greatest, but I'm just gonna do a quick scan of these because for important scans, I drum scan anyway. And then what I do is reset all the settings to zero and then go ahead and scan it as a positive film setting. And then I invert the negatives myself. All right, so let's take a look at both negatives in Photoshop. And uh, first glance, they look pretty good. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. And yeah, they look really, really well exposed. Tons of detail in the shadow areas, which I was concerned a little bit about the front of the store. So everything looks good there. These are both the same exposures. Don't see a lot of difference, but very happy with the detail that I was able to get. Me personally, I don't believe in overexposing negatives just because everybody says that's what you're supposed to do. I prefer the correct exposure. Yes, I know they can overexpose, but they do look a little different and I prefer them to be dead on. And I think that's what I've got here. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out and invert the negatives. So the first thing I gotta do is um, select I for the picker, zoom in on the border, and I make sure at least 31 by 31 is selected. And I've already clicked that, so that sets the foreground color, and then I create a new layer. So new layer, and then I gotta fill the layer with the foreground color, which is the film border. And then I change the blend mode to divide, boom, and then I click on invert. All right, so let's take a look at those both on screen. And then from there, just a couple steps, all I do is create a new levels layer. And this one's gonna be easy because the parking lot is gray, so I just select the middle picker, which is the midtones, and click on the parking lot, which instantly sets the color. And then all I do from here, um, let's zoom back in just on the lower one. Okay, so all I do from here is just set the white point and the black point, and then I'm done with the inversion. So let's set the white point, and I generally like to go just, so the name of the film just starts to clip right about there. All right, let's check the black point, and the film border is black, so I want a little bit more. All right, that looks good right there. So um, basically I'm all done from there. I'll just crop and then go to in camera raw and go ahead and edit. But let's, let's pretend that there was no easy gray part in the image itself. So let's go ahead and go back and let me show you that how I would have done it. So I'll go back to the inversion and then let's create new levels layer. And then all I do from there is just adjust the red and the blue. The green is just for luminosity. So, um, I don't know, let's back up the red just a hair about right there. Let's back up the or let's check blue, I should say. And then it's probably about right there. Go back to all colors. Let's set the white point, just like we did before. Boom, right about there. Let's set the black point. Boom, right about there. Okay, so that's pretty close, just eyeballing it. And then I would just crop it and go into camera raw the same way. So it's not really a big deal, but the, um, a lot of times in your photos, at least in my photos, there's a lot of mid-tones that I can select and it gets the color pretty close. Sometimes you can click on a parking lot, sometimes you can click on a building, but uh, it, it doesn't really matter. I can get it pretty close either way, but um, I know that a lot of people like to go up per color, um, like they would take this red and go all the way over here. You, you can do that, but the problem is, is that you introduce a ton of contrast per um, channel per color and it really makes the photo look weird so this way comes out very very clean and very nice so let's go ahead and the only thing I have left to do and there yeah there's still editing to do it's just a little dark here and there I, I get that but all I got to do from this point is just pick which one I want and let's zoom in and see if we see any differences all right so there's a guy right there and there's a shoulder inside the store let's see if and no, no guy there. There's, there's somebody standing there, but you can hardly see him. So 
probably go with the bottom one. Let me just zoom out and take a quick look at the image to see if there's anything else that I can see as a problem before I decide to edit. Oops. Before I decide to edit this one. All right. Everything looks good here. A little bit of dust to clean up. You know the colors are still off, but I'll fix that in camera raw. No problem. Yeah, everything looks good. All right, so I'm just going to go with the bottom one. So all I'm going to do at this point is crop the image and uh, then go into camera raw. So let me just give you an example really fast. Go ahead and crop that image. Just takes a second. And then um, let's go ahead and flatten the image. And then open it in camera raw. All right, so from here, I would just adjust the exposure, the contrast, highlight, shadows, color, and all that stuff. So this is my uh, edited image. This is what I've come up with. And the final image I'm really pleased with. Um, I did remove, let me see if I can go back here. All right, this oil stain right here, that's gone in the final image. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this image is that maybe the trash can on the side, I might crop it just a hair tighter. And um, yeah, really happy with the image. So I did also convert it to black and white. And after seeing the black and white, I, uh, I'm pretty sure I like the black and white a whole lot better. The color image is nice, but I think that orange in the... Uh, the wood is sort of distracting. There's a lot of colors going on. And I think black and white really fits this image a whole lot better. All right, in case you're wondering, here is the original viewfinder app snapshot that I took right before I took the photo, standing exactly where the camera was. Here's those two guys in the frame. Just to give you an idea how accurate this viewfinder app is and why I love it. So in the field, um, right here is where it put the dot. So I knew that all I had to do is center the crosshairs uh, right in here and then no need to even check the com composition, no need to check the ground glass. All I had to do was focus and level the camera. And then initially when I leveled the camera, the crosshairs were right about here. So that I just had to use some rise to get it up to right about here. So. You don't want to tilt the camera back. I'm sure all the large, large uh, format shooters already know that because then the building would be sort of leaning back and that's the whole reason why we use large format so we can use rise to straighten the lines and, and or keep the lines straight. So let's go ahead and compare that to the color image. All right, so um, just look at, uh, what I want you to look at is the sides right here. See this trash can and see this building? Now I have this viewfinder app set. You can edit the dimensions so that when I shoot um, an image on film, I get just a little bit more than the viewfinder tells me. So I know for sure if I see it in the viewfinder app, then I will get just a little bit more. So if I see it, I'll get it. So, okay, so here's the color image of the uh, final frame. And then here is the image of the viewfinder. So on the sides, you see the trash can over here, the building, so final image, viewfinder. So this is a little bit smaller. Let me see if I can zoom in just so when I, it back and forth. All right, so final image, viewfinder. That is pretty darn close. So that's why I trust that viewfinder app and uh, use it all the time. It really saves me a lot of time. Yes, I will use a dark cloth if it's a super important composition that I can't figure out any other way, but I've used this viewfinder app so many times, I, I just really trust it and uh, it sort of made me lazy. Um, composing on ground glass and using a dark cloth. I just, you know, I just don't uh, do it anymore because I don't need to. All right, so there's the color image. There's the black and white. And um, I think I'm in, I think I really like this black and white image. So, all right, so I'm pretty sure this is a keeper. So I'm going to send these um, negatives out to, uh, actually send one negative. I think there's two because I'm looking at two images. images so. Um, this was the first shot, by the way, that I took uh, on scene. I was able to go back to the video and reference um, just a couple things in the video against the photos so I knew. And what it was is this, this um, 
guy in the plaid shirt came out first, so I knew that this was the first image that I took. So anyways, not that that makes a big difference, but anyways, just like to know. All right, so then I put both files into Lightroom, and then I add the metadata, which is adding the date, GPS location, shutter speed, aperture, camera, lens, and I did uh, push out a video that explains all that if you want to take a check, take a look, I should say. And then go ahead and uh, I'm reading the metadata back. And then as you can see here in just a second, I'll do that on both files. And then all the metadata is filled out. The camera type, the lens, aperture, everything. So if you want to know how to do that, check my channel. I did recently release a video on exactly how to do this. All right, so there you have it. Thanks for coming along, and I will see you next time.